Welcome to Know Your Bible. Today as we progress, we're going to look at Genesis chapter 4, and in particular Cain and Abel, which gives us a lesson in acceptable worship. After Adam and Eve were driven from the Garden of Eden, Eve gave birth to two sons, first Cain and then Abel. We are given specific details of the occupations that these two men pursued. Abel was a shepherd, whereas Cain was involved in horticulture or farming. In Genesis chapter 4 and verse 3 we read that in the process of time it came to pass that Cain brought the fruit of the ground and an offering unto the Lord. The term in process of time is a Hebrew expression and it means at the end of days and this tells us that there was a set time for them to present an offering to God in worship. Now we read that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. Well no doubt Cain selected for his offering the best fruit that he had grown. He was sure that God would accept what he wanted to offer. We also read, And Abel he also bought of the firstlings of his flock, and of the fat thereof. These details indicate that not only did Abel understand that he was, he was to offer an animal, but he knew that God had made known the way to worship acceptably. He understood that the fat must be offered, which became a special feature later of the sacrifices under the law of Moses. Secondly, he, he offered the firstborn of the flock, and that was also a feature of that law. And evidently these details had been explained to both Cain and Abel, so that Abel made his offering because he not only understood what God required, but he also wanted to please him. And so we read that the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering, but unto Cain and to his offering he had no respect. Note the order that is set out here. The Lord first had respect to Abel, that is, he was pleased with the spirit that motivated him in his worship. Then he had respect to the offering because it represented Abel's understanding and obedience to God. God did not require the sacrifice of animals as an end in itself, but what God required was a heart that understood the significance of sacrifice. But look at the reaction to Cain. Again here we note that God had not respect first to Cain because of the frame of mind which he brought his offerings and then to the offering itself which was not what God required. And of course looking at Cain's reaction he was very wroth and his countenance fell. Well what are the lessons for us? We have already seen these same principles set out in Genesis chapter 3. After Adam and Eve sinned, they invented their own covering for their nakedness. We saw there was that there that nakedness was typical of sin. And God showed that the covering of fig leaves for sin was unacceptable to him and provided coats of skin. God had been wronged and only he could establish the basis for the forgiveness of sin. In fact, the word religion means to rebind and therefore to restore a person into fellowship with God. Since it was man who wronged God, it is not for man to design his religion. What man must do is find out what God requires. The various forms of religion in the world today reveal the many attempts men have made to formulate their own way back to God. These attempts are no better than the fig leaf covering that Adam and Eve tried to make to cover their nakedness. When God provided coats of skin for Adam and Eve, he was indicating a principle which is set out in Hebrews chapter 9 verse 22, that without the shedding of blood there can be no remission or forgiveness of sins. The lamb slain to provide their covering foreshadowed Jesus Christ, the promised Redeemer, whom God would send to, as John chapter 1 and verse 29 says, uh, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. When Cain and Abel approached God in worship, they needed to acknowledge 
that they were sinners in need of the covering God would provide. Abel offered in faith and his faith was acceptable in God's sight. As Hebrews 11 verse 4 says, By faith Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. Paul points out that without faith it is impossible to please God. Cain appears to have offered what he thought God should accept. And possibly it was the very best of his fruits. But it was not what God required. No doubt he was proud of what he had to offer, but it did not reflect faith and obedience to God's requirements. His offering was therefore not accepted. Abel's offering was accepted because it was what God asked. Here we have the first example of faithful obedience to God. A man cannot honour God more than in believing what he promises and doing what he commands. Abel's offering showed his faith in God's promise of the Redeemer and his actions demonstrate his faith. We read in chapter 7 of Genesis 4 So the Lord said to Cain, Why are you angry? And why is your countenance fallen? If you do well, will you not be accepted? God is indeed just, but merciful as well. You know, a change of heart on Cain's part and making the right offering could have restored him to favour with God. But Cain was now eaten out with hatred for his brother. And in verse 8 we read, And when they were in the field, Cain rose up against Abel his brother and killed him. In 1 John chapter 3 and verses 10 to 12 we read, Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor is he who does not love his brother. For this is the message that you heard from the beginning, that we should love one another, not as Cain, who murdered his brother. And why did he murder him? Because his works were evil and his brother's righteous. This clearly shows the enmity at work, which came about as a direct result of sin entering the world. Well, the family of Cain contrasted that with that of Seth. After the tragic death of Abel, Adam and Eve had another son named Seth. We read in Genesis chapter 4, verses 25 and 26. The genealogies of these two sons are set out in detail for us. Cain's genealogy is recorded in Genesis 4, verses 17 to 23, and Seth's is found in Genesis 5. There is one point that is particularly worth noting. The seventh from Adam in Cain's line was Lamech. Of him it is recorded that he was the first polygamist, that is, one having one more than one wife, in the Bible. He was a vengeful man, threatening to physically punish anyone who withstood him. However, in the line of Seth, the seventh from Adam was Enoch. It is recorded of him that he walked with God. We are also told that he was a prophet of God and spoke against the ungodliness that was so widespread in the earth. In contrast to the prevalent wickedness in the line of Cain, there were those who, like Enoch, endeavoured to walk in God's ways. The principle of Genesis 3.15 of two seeds, which would spring forth in the world, was now well and uh, truly developed. There were those who pleased themselves, indulging in whatever their heart desired, the seed of the serpent, and those like Enoch, who endeavoured to walk in the ways of God, the seed of the woman. Between these two classes, there was that enmity that God had foretold. That enmity will always exist between those who follow the ways of sin and those who strive to obey God and keep his ways.